going to show you guys how to do the ProRes 422 in a studio. As you can see here that this is the video from my crappy second camcorder which is like under 200 bucks. The following footage you'll see will be played back later in the video when it's being fed directly into the Jackbelly 4K Mini. You're going to need an HDMI clean output. If your camcorder supports 10-bit, 422, this will work as well. And UHD and HDR. I have my camera going into the splitter and being split to the 1080p monitor and also fed out to the computer in the living room. The advantage of having a split and a monitor is you can enable tools like false color to help with exposure and white balance and also see how you frame yourself in the camera if you're doing studio work. And you can see as we turn off the false color. And we have the X-Rite Color Passport. This is used for raw camera Canon footage when you shoot photography, but you can also use it in DaVinci Resolve. And we have a 25 foot HDMI cable going to the input of the 4K Declan Blackmagic mini capture card. And over here is my uh, editing station, my portable mouse and keyboard, and my 65 inch HDR Sony television. Okay, first thing you want to do is load up the desktop video setup utility. And if you're running SDI, you select SDI input. If you're running HDMI, you're going to select the HDMI input. We'll be using HDMI today. You do not want to change anything else in this uh, in these settings. In the video description, there will be a link to the Virtual Dub 2. Download it, install it. This will be way better than the OBS software. Allow 422 10-bit to remain in the pipeline as you capture. Go to Capture AVI, and you're going to see the video feed from the DAC link 4K Mini. Select this option. And then we're going to go to Capture Filter, and you'll see that this is already set. This will be 4K if you have 4K as the input. But I have a 1080p Capture uh, camcorder hooked up. Uh, we're going to go down to Compression, and we're going to select FFmpeg ProRes. Hit the Configure tab, set 422. It'll be set to 10-bit, and set the slider all the way to the left, and select HQ, High Quality. Now uh, you're going to go up to the utility up at the top, as shown in the next clip, click Capture, select Set Capture File, give it a name. Now you can run a UHD signal into this as well, and capture at 23.976, and add the HDR later. If you have an HDR source, so this could do multiple things in just the studio work. Okay, now that we got the file set, we're going to click Capture and Capture Video. Look it over at the right side of the screen. You'll notice the capture bitrate, the amount of hard drive and time I have left for a one terabyte space, and the compression ratio. And you notice the data rate. That is amazing for I'm capturing, I'm going to have zero drop frames, I have a dual RAID 0, two 500 gigabyte SSDs. And now that I'm on camera, you can see they have the X-Rite color passport beside me. 
and I'm just running a uh, frame rate test, natural movement, just to show you how nice the uh, capture is. Currently my, my studio is running the LCD lighting and I have a softbox as well. It's a yeah, running three light system with a black backdrop. Okay, so you're going to want to get the encoder that I'm using. Just type in HDR, go to my channel, scroll down and click on this video, watch it, learn how to install the encoder and then you can continue on uh, with the rest of the information in this video. We're going to need to change the container from the .avi to .mov. The actual progress file remains untouched. And we're going to show this, we're going to be using a tool called Media Info to view the color data, the bitrate, the resolution and the audio. Very simple, install it, right click, and then you'll have an option that says Media Info. You know, the bit rate is 405 megabyte. And we're gonna scroll down, you'll see it's done in ProRes. 422 is 10 bit. And the audio stereo. We're gonna be scrapping the audio track and replacing it with the Zoom H5N shotgun mic audio. This is important, you read this part, you gotta set the frame rate and the playback frame rate before you import your first set of footage. It remains fixed through the whole timeline, so you cannot change it at export. We're gonna go on to uh, other project manager, you'll see project settings, and we wanna change this to 29.9. Nine, seven, and change that to 29.97 as well. This step is so important you do this before you start. Okay. Now this is the how you get the ProRes into the DaVinci Resolve. And this is why you download my encoder. And it's really, really fast when you convert containers because you're not really encoding, you're only changing the container format of the file to reside in a uh, QuickTime.move container. You're going to select Copy Mux and you'll see it'll say Container Configuration. Select MKV, go to FFmpeg and select .mov. Leave the audio untouched, select Next. And you'll see it says .avi and the target is .mov. We're going to fast forward here, but you'll notice the frame rate down below is ridiculous. It's very fast. And the map is 1 to 1, which means it's untouched bid rate. Okay, let's shut it down. We're going to use the media info, right click on the file that was created, and you'll notice that the overall bitrate still stays at 405 megabytes a second. The color is still 422, and it's uh, untouched, as you can tell, it's still progress. Now this is a port, my camera can record 35 megabytes a second. This is huge when you're doing video editing, that you can have all this data for color, for effects, for shadowing, for sharpening, dragging the movie file onto DaVinci. We're going to select do not change. And you're going to see that when you scrub through ProRes footage, it scrubs like butter. It's really good to edit in this format. You can see the timeline as well, scrubs like butter. Okay, we have the X-Rite Passport Color. 
I bought this originally for my Canon photography, but I found out that DaVinci actually has a tool that's built in where you can uh, select color chart and line up the graph with the X-ray passport and it will automatically calibrate the colors of your camera to perfect color. So you really don't need to guess the skin tones because it automatically will do it with this little passport. It's quite a powerful tool. You can still add contrast, gamma, but when you're trying to get the colors right, this is so fast. And you'll notice my skin color will change from pink to a off skin color. I'm going to concentrate on the RGB braid as I apply it. And you'll see that there's a very slight color shift or color cast shift in the ProRes footage. I'm just going to press Control Z to remove an ad and remove an ad. And you can see the slight difference on the RGB braid. We'll zoom up, look at the skin tones. And you can see that that's actual real skin color when it's been applied. back to the website, type in my name, click on the link, and you're going to type in the search engine. Max bitrate, and we're going to download the, I'm going to watch this video, and this will show you how to configure the render out settings for DaVinci. So this will allow you to capture into a smaller gigabytes. Maintain ProRes and keep the full control of your footage for 10-bit HDR 4K. Thank you for watching.